Today we are going to see a very fundamental concept in system design. So whatever system or application you design has to be scalable. That is, it should be performant even when the number of users grows rapidly. So let's see what are the different methods of scaling our system. But let's first understand what is scalability. So as I said, scalability means the ability to handle a growing amount of work. So when the number of users of your application grows, so in initial days the number of users was very small, but once your product becomes popular, the number of users starts increasing, sometimes exponentially. So you should be ready that your system is as performant as it was earlier, even when the number of users increases. So ability to handle growing amount of work in an effective and capable manner. So it should not slow down over time. How then let's see how can we achieve this scalability. So there are mainly two ways. One we call vertical scaling. This is also called scaling up sometimes. And the second approach is to do horizontal scaling and this is also called scaling out so let's see what are vertical and horizontal scaling so first what is vertical scaling so vertical scaling means to add more resources to your existing computer or we also call it node sometimes. So we have one computer. We can also call it node. And what we do, we add more resources to it. That is we increase its hard disk, we increase its RAM, and we improve its CPU that is we scale vertically we are just changing this machine only we are just making it more powerful so add more resources to existing existing computer or node. So what we can add? We can add more cores, we can add we can have a better CPU, we can increase its RAM, we can increase its memory so that it can handle more data and we can also increase its disk space. So now it can store more amount of data. So here we are making the node more powerful. So this is called vertical scaling. Now on the other hand, what is horizontal scaling? So instead of increasing the power of the existing system, we add more system. So what we do here, so we have one system or one node. we add more such nodes so we are scaling out we are scaling horizontally here we were scaling vertically so if one computer was able to process let's say thousand requests per second now with more number of computers we can distribute the incoming request to different computers and they can serve different clients and uh, this method is more scalable like when the number of uh, requests increase further we can add more nodes and just route some of our requests to that new node so these are the two main methods of scaling now let's understand this concept with a simple example 
so let's say you created one machine learning application where when anybody enters one image which is black and white image and the client sends one black and white image and you process your API CNN based API processes this image and returns a colored image for the same given black and white image so you take a black and white image and what your API returns a colored image so we call this as request and this is response so some client some mobile client let's say sends the, this black and white image to your system this API is deployed on your one computer and it takes that image processes that and sends a colored image and uh, this is a very good solution and now uh, it's becoming popular among the general public and more and more people want to use your service so you were charging some uh, money for that service and now it's gaining popularity so now the number of users has started to increase but now you feel that uh, your system is not able to process those requests very efficiently it's taking much more time to process all those requests so you think that uh, let's buy a new system or let's improve your system so earlier it was a uh, 16 GB machine and 1 terabyte of space so what you did you increased it to 32 GB and maybe 2 terabyte and you also increased its CPU but so maybe it was okay till this point when the number of users increased from here to here but after this again you started facing the same problem so you again increase the RAM and uh, other resources but there is a limitation to that you cannot go beyond the current uh, maximum available RAM possible on a computer so it has a limitation and you will uh, think that now there is no possibility to increase the RAM or improve its processor so this approach is what we defined vertical scaling on the other hand uh, you could have just uh, opted to buy more computer you could have added more number of computer and uh, routed some of the request to this computer and some of the request to this computer and deployed the same API on both these machines now when more users came you purchased additional resources and did the same thing so this is the second approach that we discussed and we call it horizontal scaling so now I hope it's clear what is the difference between vertical scaling and horizontal scaling now let's uh, summarize this by looking at the differences between these two types of scaling methods so what are the main differences horizontal scaling and on the right hand side I will write vertical scaling So first thing is that on horizontal scaling you have multiple systems so you have one load balancer here before request so request will be sent to this load balancer and this will decide that which computer has less number of requests being processed and it will send uh, the further request to that computer so here in horizontal scaling load balancing is required in vertical scaling you have just one system so all the request has to be processed by that computer only so 
no load balancing required now next is whatever if sometime fault occurs then this horizontal scaling system is more robust because suppose some fault occurs in this system and this system goes down so you can uh, still route uh, the request to these two computers only or you have more computers than all these computers except this but still it's able to process those requests but in case of vertical scaling uh, if this system goes down then uh, suddenly all the requests stop from being processed because you had only one system and there is some fault in that so it's a single point of failure so once this node goes down everything goes down whereas in horizontal scaling there may be slight impact on performance but the whole system will not go down simultaneously now uh, in case of horizontal scaling we have multiple computers so data has to be synchronized between them like client may also be updating some data based on that you may need to change something so for communicating between the systems we do network calls we call it rpc remote procedure calls between computers whereas everything lies on the same computer in this case so we can do ipc inter process communication and this is faster than remote procedure calls now the fourth point is it it can have data inconsistency so if some data is updated on one system it may take some time to get updated on other system and it may result in some data inconsistency so whereas in this case data is consistent because everything every data is on the same computer now one more point so as we saw earlier this horizontal scaling thing scales better because uh, when more user come add more machine and uh, you can repeat the same there is no limit on the number of machines whereas in vertical scaling we have some limitation on the maximum ram or maximum space that we can have so horizontal scaling method scales well with increase in number of users but in this case vertical scaling case we have hardware limitation so both the methods have some advantage and disadvantages but mostly the horizontal scaling wins because of this scaling thing that is it can scale indefinitely and scaling is very easy whereas in the vertical scaling we are limited by hardware so we can make some hybrid solution that is first try to increase the power of the node and once you have reached the limit add another node and again do vertical scaling and again horizontal so this would be a hybrid solution and for the new uh, companies or startups deploying some solution initially they can start with this vertical scaling because for the beginning few months the it's expected that uh, very less people will be aware of this service and uh, the load on the system will be less and once after some time the company reaches the break even point then the company can think of buying more resources buying more computers and they can go into horizontal scaling so i hope uh, i made it very clear to you what are the different methods of scaling and what are the advantages of horizontal scaling and vertical scaling so this uh, is a central concept and it will be very useful in uh, your system design interviews so thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you